don't see him. By the pipe, I seen. Oh, uh, you gonna shoot him? Uh, yeah. I Get will. him, boy. They're ready to roll. Ready to roll. Safety on. Off. Off. So there's a shell racked in there now. Yep. Welcome to Slack Tide Adventures. On this episode, we're in South Florida in the backdrop of the Everglades, hunting invasive iguanas in the canals just outside of Fort Lauderdale. This is a wild one. Enjoy the show. You stay wind. Is it best to have two guns ready? Or? Yeah, you could double tap them. That's not a bad idea. No, he didn't want you shooting up. Jeff, give me a picture. Come on, buddy, get back in the boat. Just lay him right there. Right over there, snow cart. In the blood spot. Look at that thing. I don't want the blood on the carpet. Okay, gotcha. Sorry. That was our first iguana of the day, and it ended up being the biggest of the 20 or so that we killed. While I get settled back into the boat, let's take a moment to discuss the air rifles that we used uh, during this particular iguana hunt. We were outfitted with the Umarex Gauntlet air rifle that fires a .25 caliber pellet at nearly a thousand feet per second. Here's a screenshot of the exact model we were using. Our guide had them outfitted with this CV life scope that you can buy on Amazon for less than $60. The combination was fairly accurate from within 30 yards or so. It takes a couple of shots to get the feel of the setup. They shoot a tad low when you begin, so you need to compensate by aiming a little high. Boy, and his head kind of explodes when it hits him. Just right. He's shooting a 34 grain pellet, 1,000 feet a second. So we take a minute to repack the cooler and get some beer on ice uh, before we head out down the canal in search of more iguanas. What's unique about this is you're hunting in the suburbs uh, in these canals uh, in basically in people's backyards. So it's a really unique hunting environment. 
As we cruise the canal looking for large iguanas, it's important to understand that these animals are an invasive species. Much like pythons, boa constrictors, and snakeheads, they're not supposed to be here, and millions of these reptiles infest South Florida. Our guide Steve from HuntingIguanas.com says that they do over 400 hunts a year in South Florida and haven't noticed an impact in the population at all. It's, it's a pretty interesting sight uh, to watch these iguanas when you roll up on them. Uh, if you get too close, they raise up on their hind legs and run away like a mini Jurassic Park. And what we're doing right now is we're searching for large iguanas. There are thousands of small iguanas that line the sides of these canals. We're looking for large iguanas. Uh, you know, they want to leave the small ones for another day because these guys have built a, a nice industry around this and are kind of doing the community a service by trying to rid, uh, rid, rid the area of these animals. Over them. This may look like an easy shot, but remember you're shooting from a boat that's somewhere between 20 to 30 yards away from your target. There's the wind to deal with, and the iguanas are always just kind of twitching. All of those factors make it a little more difficult than it first appears. The angle of this shot makes it look like I'm about to execute Jeff, but I'm really shooting way off to his left. Uh, I popped one of these things and escaped into the canal. Oh. I love our guide Steve reacting every time we make a good shot. He's as excited as we are. It's obvious from the scenery that we are hunting in residential areas and at other points busy intersections. Our guide Steve did an excellent job of making sure that we had an enjoyable experience as well as ensuring that everyone around us is safe. And you kind of have to figure that's a tough chore uh, considering he doesn't really know anything about the clients he's taking on his trips, how much experience they ha have uh, firing weapons, uh, you know, just the maturity level of those guys. But but we, we had a great experience with him. He was a colorful character, told a lot of great stories while we were out there, really enjoyed our time on the water with him. Got him. Got him. Good. I'm going to videotape it. Get him. Oh, all right. I was going to crawl up into the weeds. Quite a few times, the pursuit turns to foot. You have to go ashore to track down your the iguanas after they've been shot. Uh, this is uh, an example of us kind of going out there. We had, we had shot two or three of them at this location, uh, and Jeff was brave enough to go up there and get them. Oh, you get the little one now. That one dead up there? Is that the one you got earlier? No, The other one's underneath this. You have to walk down a seawall a little. Did we, is that one we just shot? You, sh you shot two of them? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize it. Well, yeah, that's the, that, that's the one. <laughs> no, there's another one right here. I, where, see, I think I see his tail. This is where Jeff dies. If you walk, walk right down the seawall, his tail is right guy. there. Grab him, pull him out. That's the one you hit. Uh, yeah, the other one. Oh, the great white hunter. Right here. Look at him. We're turning back. Show me what you got, Jeff. Hold on. Pick them all up. I'll take a picture of you with all of them. <laughs> Terrible camel work by me. Did not adjust in the GoPro to get Jeff in frame. Right I was now. taking too Let's busy see. taking photos with my cell phone. To to because I I didn't recognize any of it. Yeah. I've been so busy the last couple years with these iguanas that. Nice. I'm a fucking dead. 
Dead nut. Dead nut. Ha! How about Steve's reaction on that shot by Jeff? He's genuinely excited every time we make a great shot, and that made it really fun for all of us out there. I found it ironic that when you shoot these things, if they land in the water, they just sink. So this is us trying to recover a body from the bottom of the canal. The canal is pretty clear, so you can see them down there. But Sorry. Color on his belly. Mm -hmm. Dude, that was a one and done. Look, his eyes are shut. Smoke him. Oh, he's in the drink. <laughs> we need to hit him again? Yeah, he's still. I just saw him spit. If you look down the left side of the rail, right down the barrel, the left side of the barrel for your aim. Don't left use, side. Don't use the scope. Look right down the rail. Jesus. He's wondering what the fuck's going on. <laughs> He's dead. I can't fucking hit him. The good news, I'm getting all this on video. Yeah, fuck Don't you. fall out. <laughs> you gotta retrieve him now. <laughs> I gotta bring Cooper back and do this. He would oh, love this yeah. shit. I should have brought him. I regret not doing it. I'm gonna. I'm trying to get my dad to come up, go peacock bass fishing. We'll go peacock bass fishing and do a date. He's right there. You got him? No. He's literally right in front of the boat. Oh, I him. No. speed up all this video of going under these bridges. I thought this was really interesting, kind of, especially because we're hunting in, in, in a residential area uh, down here in South Florida. It's kind of cool going underneath all these bridges uh, in, in overpasses. heading back to the boat ramp at the end of the day and saw one large iguana on the bank. Because this area backed up into a residential neighborhood, our guide wanted me to shoot it from the shore to ensure that there was no chance of the pellet endangering a homeowner. It was about a hundred yard walk back to the iguana, so we had a lot of dead film here, so I sped this up, uh, bypassing over an interesting conversation between Jeff and Steve about burrowing owls. Steve, who also works as a fishing guide for largemouth and peacock bass uh, in Lake Okeechobee, is an expert on the wildlife here in South Florida and pointed out numerous animals like alligators, Egyptian geese, and burrowing owls, which we took an interesting photo of here. I'd never seen those before. Uh, you can see the iguanas up front, how many iguanas we killed. I think we ended up killing about 15 or 16 when it was all said and done. Uh, Got about 30 yards. Yeah! Yeah! Damn, that was nice. Well, there's another friggin' owl right there. Dang. 
If you've ever been on a trip like this, you know that the guide makes all the difference. Steve was great all day. The three of us carried on some great conversations, and his insight into the wildlife of South Florida and the history of the Everglades was enlightening. Again, I can't help but be tickled at how excited he gets when we make a nice shot. You can see his reaction here when I pepper this iguana from about 30 yards away. Nice shooting, Rocky. That was great. That was pretty good, too. It's just cool to watch that. Oh, yeah. And the sound when it that just it makes boom. that whap. This was such a great expedition uh, for both myself and my friend Jeff, and I'd like to thank the guys at huntingiguanas.com, especially our guide Steve, for uh, putting us on the iguanas. You see there is some photos here at the end of the iguanas we killed. We even found a, caught a peacock bass on the way in. We saw a peacock bass on the bed. Really appreciate you guys staying in and watching this, and uh, like and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time at Slag Tide Adventures.